Greetings, and welcome to episode 73. In today's episode, we'll be discussing the supernatural. Uh, when I say the supernatural, I just mean weird, unexplainable occurrences. Whether it be you thought you saw a ghost, or I thought I saw a ghost, or something, something just unexplainable. And I'll start with some of the smaller items and move up to uh, some of the bigger items, <laughs> I guess. So they're not exactly in chronological order, but they're going to go from the cutesy weird to the, oh my god, you could make a TV show out of some stuff like that. <laughs> okay, so if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back. Relax and enjoy. So, the supernatural. <laughs> a lot of these stories, or should I say, some of the, a few of these stories, revolve around a couch and chair that we received from my wife's grandmother upon her death. We got her little furniture set, which, like I just said, it was a couch and her little comfy chair. And uh, when we first got the stuff, nothing weird happened. And then all of a sudden, weird stuff started happening. Now, let me give you a little bit of setting for this, a little backdrop. Uh, my kids were much younger. This was like 12 or 13 years ago. So my one daughter was three, two. And my other daughter was one. So, was she two? Yeah, one was two, one was one. And they had their little, they had toys in their room, but they had a toy box out in the living room. That way it was easier for us to clean up after them. We didn't have to haul everything back into their bedroom. We could just chuck it in their toy box in the living room. Well, you, if you have kids or go around people with kids, you see the different types of toys they have. Well, they had a toy phone. Uh, and I was home by myself at this time, but similar things happened to my wife when I wasn't there. And I'm sitting on the couch and I'm watching TV and all of a sudden the phone, you know, you push a button and it says the number you push and it says six. And it waits a minute and it says six. <laughs> and I said, if it says it again, I'm chucking it in the garbage. Six. <laughs> I said, okay. But I didn't have the heart to throw my kids' toys away. So I just took it. And I know this was wrong. I should have put it probably in my room to keep my kids safe. But I chucked it in their room <laughs> to keep me safe. <laughs> because I was under the assumption that it wasn't the toy, it was something in the apartment, and they just didn't need to be playing with that toy. <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't the only toy that did that. That was just the, the one, the most notable one. And then I would go to work and come home and hear similar stories from my wife about other toys or going off all by themselves, nobody's touching them. So that's the first one. The second one would be when my wife, she loves to sleep on the couch. She loves sleeping on the couch more than she likes sleeping in the bed because sleeping on the couch, it feels like a nap. If you take a nap in the bed, it doesn't feel like a nap so much. If you take a nap on the couch, it's kind of cozy, but it's not. you don't get that full sleep like you would on a bed. Well, she would tell me that she'd have really weird dreams. And I like weird dreams, so I, I like the first opportunity I got, I would sleep on the couch. And you did, you would have really strange dreams sleeping on the couch. And remember, I told you, we got the couch from her dead grandmother. Well, this is this one's kind of a doozy. And I said I'd start with the small stuff, but this one, this is back when we first got the couch. So this is kind of in chronological order. Well... Thought that was a bee. <laughs> Just a big fly. Anyway, I fell asleep on the couch. And you know how you're half in sleep and half out of sleep. And that's when you decide whether you're going to go back to sleep or you're going to get up. So I decided to get up. To get up. 
And at the very moment when I started to get up, when I moved to get up off the couch, I was waking up again. And at first I was like, oh cool, it's one of those dreams. Because we've all had that dream where we, we think we're awake and then we wake up and then we're like, oh cool, I was just dreaming. Well, I went to get up again and I woke up again. And I went to get up again and I woke up again. And this went on and on and on and on. Until finally, finally I'm starting to panic. I'm like, I can't wake up. Oh my God, I can't wake up. I can't. Wake. This isn't one of those where you wake up and you're fully awake and you can't move. I couldn't wake up. I kept thinking I was awake, but when I went to move, I would wake up again. And so I finally... something occurred to me I had to ground myself not just like like you ground a wire but in I had to ground my energy with the energy of other people and there were people talking in the hallway by now and so I was still asleep and was fighting my body to because the way I was laying the door I was laying this way and the door was over here on this side and so I was fighting my body to lift my hand up, grab the doorknob, and open the door. And as soon as I did that, I was able to get up. But I've had the, you're awake, but you can't move your body before. I've had that happen before. The, 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 my most notable event of that happening, uh, yes, I'm injecting us another story in the middle of this story because this, this first story is not done yet but I'm gonna give a little reference here I've had that happen before where you you wake up and you're fully awake and you know you're awake but you can't move your body I've had it several times but the, the most notable one I was living in Nebraska in this old 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 house built like I'm gonna say in the 20s or 30s possibly even the 40s but it's, it's a very old house well I wake up and I can't get up and usually when I do in those situations I don't just try to fight my way back up I just lay there and so I just laid there and all of a sudden I hear two little kids giggling and clear as day footprints two sets of footprints running out of the bedroom I didn't see them but you know what little kid footprints sound like on a, on a wooden floor do, 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 do giggling and laughing the whole way out of the room and as soon as they hit the doorway poof, I was able to move again <clears throat> so this wasn't like that this was I couldn't wake up moving my body was secondary and the moving my body I already knew I wasn't going to be able to move my body because I wasn't awake I knew I wasn't awake I knew I wasn't awake because every time I tried to move I would wake back up and so I had to fight my body to get to the doorknob and as soon as I touched the doorknob I was able to turn it and open the door and just the energy of the people in the hallway just comes rushing into the house which grounded me to the now to the here and I was able to get up and I didn't sleep on that couch I'm gonna have to say for about two years <laughs> I didn't sleep on that couch again ever for two years until Okay, this leads into another big one. Uh, until we moved, like, I think a year and a half, two years, about two years later. So it was about two years I didn't sleep on the couch. Two years later, we moved to Arizona. And I'm going to say it took us about two or three months to get into our own place. We were staying with my mom. But we still had the same couch and the same chair. And one night, my wife and I were fighting. And I'm a big badass man. I'm gonna go sleep on the couch. Ha ha ha. So I'm sleeping on the couch, and something wakes me out of a dead sleep. And I'm just instantly on guard, like, what's something going on? What's going on? And I look down, and there's a green glow coming from underneath the couch. And I was like, holy shit! <laughs> and I got up and I ran to the bedroom and I didn't want to fight with my wife anymore. So, if nothing else, that couch saved my marriage once. <laughs> I missed that couch. But after that, you'd have 
vivid dreams on the couch, but nothing really, really weird would happen on that couch. But there was what well, what else was there? I don't know if it was because I was sitting on the couch or just because the couch was there. But we lived in a different place. We lived we're living in Michigan at the time. The first when we first got the couch, we were living in Michigan. Then we moved to Arizona, then we moved back to Michigan. And this 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 particular story is when we moved back to Michigan. So I lied. These are mostly in chronological order. I said they wouldn't be. They are. <coughs> My wife was baking cookies, and the way that that house was set up, or I should say shack, <laughs> the, couch, the couch is here, then the front door is diagonal from my position, and the kitchen is directly to my left, and then you have the rest of the living room, and then the hallway leading to the bedrooms and the bathroom, and the back door, or laundry room, whichever. Well, I look over there, and clear as day, her grandmother, I see her grandmother and not her baking the cookies. And you know how you shake it off and look again? Well, I shook it off, looked again, and instead of, she didn't disappear, but now I could just, I could see my wife standing there also. And she was like, in my wife, showing her like she was the one baking the cookies and my wife was just like a vessel for this woman to make my family cookies which the cookies were awesome but still kind of weird <laughs> uh, here's one I'm trying to leave the, the best for last because it's it's a doozy I'm still not even sure matter of fact I, I don't know what happened that day and it's yeah, it leaves a lot of questions in my head, and a lot of people I tell, that's what I've told maybe three people about it, they don't believe me, which is fine, because I'm not sure I believe it myself, But and it happened to me, not the point, point being, I'm an over-the-road truck driver, I don't know if you've seen my other videos or heard me say it, but by trade, I am an over-the-road truck driver, that's not what I do for a living right now, but I am a Class A CDL holding professional driver. Well, on one occasion, I happened to my delivery, I got to my delivery early, and it didn't deliver for another day and a half or two days or something like that, and so I found a safe place to park, they call it safe haven is what it's called, I found safe haven that wasn't in any, uh, by this parking lot, I wasn't taking up any space and or being a nuisance it was an abandoned factory of some sort and uh, I was there for uh, for the first I'd say half day and the night time about dusk rolled in I would say dusk rolled in and it was not dark but it wasn't like super bright noon out and there was a cat that had been running around out there and he was out on the side of the building and you know cats chase things that aren't there well this instance I happened to be able to see what he was chasing little blue and green orbs were bouncing when well, I wouldn't say bouncing or like flying back and forth and he was chasing them and that wouldn't have struck me as weird because we've all heard of orbs well most of us but when you walked past the building, you would swear there were people inside the building. And this place was deserted and abandoned. And you would swear there was people in that building watching you as you walked by. Because I had to, there was a gas station uh, about an eighth of a mile away. And that's where I would go to use the bathroom. That's where I would go to get my food and snacks and whatnot. Because like I said, I was stuck here for a day and a half, two days. So... But every time you walk by, and if it was if it wasn't like daylight, you would just have this feeling. And I want to say I saw some stuff, but could have been shadows, could have been whatever. But regardless of what I saw, you could feel people watching you. It wasn't like a malevolent, oh, I'm gonna get you, like they show in the movies. It was more of a, hey, how you doing? 
<laughs> and I was like, cool. You know, I didn't feel afraid or anything, so I was like, cool, you know, wave. <laughs> but then, that after that is when I started seeing the cat chasing the orbs. And two days that went on, the cat chasing the orbs, and I could see them. And that's the first time I'd ever been able to see what the cat was chasing. And I was like, whoa, that is so cool. And that's the first time I ever just sat and watched the cat chase nothing. He was just having the time of his life. And from what I saw, the little orbs were having the time of their lives. They were, they were all, everyone was having fun. I thought it was really cool. That was one of the, my coolest little supernatural stories. Ah, uh, let me, can I think of another one? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> trying to think of uh, I mean because I've got some really cool ones but these are these this is my best stuff here well I could tell you stuff about this apartment I live in right now where I where I live sitting on the couch as you can see okay the front door is directly to my left about I'm gonna say about 10 feet to my left uh, you got the TV window and the living room pretty much this is it and then over here's the dining room sliding door uh, about 25 feet away, maybe 30 feet away, is the laundry room, and around this little cut, little wall, is the door to my bedroom. Well, I sit here at this table a lot because my laptop's here. This is where I make my videos, and this is where I do my computer stuff. And sometimes this is where I play my video games from because I'll watch documentaries while I'm playing video games. Well, every so often, you'll see something move out of the corner of your eye. And like I said with the other story, you, you know, you shake it off, look back, and it's gone. Well, you shake it off and look, and it's still there. People moving around in my bedroom. And at first, it would only happen with the door if the door was, you know, cracked, and you maybe see a little something go by. But the door is wide open now, and I've been seeing people move around in this bedroom pretty much all day. And my wife and my kids are out at the pool. Matter of fact, the reason they're out of the pool is because I'm making this video and they didn't want to disturb me. So, yeah, that's another thing. And uh, my wife swears, because I even when I was truck driving, but now that I'm not, I still, I work nights, so we don't sleep together except for on my days off. Or should, perverts, what I meant to say is, we don't sleep in the same bed at the same time unless I have a day off. Anyway, uh, she says several times she's felt like someone has walked into the room and up to her or there was someone in the room with her and the light's on and she knows there's nobody there. Or sometimes we'll be sitting here in the living room and someone will knock on the door and you go to the door and nobody's there. And the kids are asleep. So there's that. Just high weirdness. <laughs> and it'd be different if it was just me. Okay? Because I'm used to weird stuff. But my wife is telling me this stuff. That she's experiencing this stuff when I'm not here. Matter of fact, she was experiencing the knock on the door thing before it ever happened to me. She said, oh, that's been happening for a while. And I was like, really? She said, yeah. I said, "You? it's not the girls kicking the wall? and Because I have... My daughter's bedroom is right directly behind this wall right here. There's two two girls in there. One sleeps on this wall, immediate wall. One sleeps across the room. So if she kicks, there's no way she could kick the wall because her bed is perpendicular to the wall. The daughter that sleeps on this wall, her bed is parallel to the wall. But the wall is drywall and the door is metal. Two distinctly different sounds. But just to be sure, I asked her, you know, did, could Raven have kicked the wall? And she said, this happens even when Raven's staying the night out. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> that kills that theory. <laughs> oh, but I've never thought ever, not since we got together. And it's not that I've never seen ghosts or we've never experienced ghosts. The last place we lived in Michigan was heavily heavily trafficked by spirits but I'm not the kind of person that doesn't want them there 
and neither is my wife. They just give her the willies because, well, my life, my, my life, my wife likes to be afraid. Fact. Okay, so she likes to be afraid. So when the spirits come, she knows they're there, but she she gets uneasy around spirits. Whereas I'm like cool, and I uh, sometimes I'll try and interact with them, and that may sound weird to some people, but that's how I roll. <laughs> And let's face it, no such thing as normal anyway, right? Ah, uh, that's tasty. Anyway. So. My last story. I don't know if this is just weird, or you could chalk it up to supernatural. I was... How old was I? I want to say I was 30, 31 years old, possibly even 32 years old. So this was about 10 years ago. And I was coming home from work. And if anybody knows how Phoenix, Arizona is laid out, I lived at the time, matter of fact, we're moving back to this place. I lived just off the 17 on uh, the I-17 on Thomas, Thomas Road or Avenue or Street, whatever Thomas Road, I think it is. And uh, when you get off at this exit heading north, you get off on the Thomas exit heading north, you cross underneath what is called Grand Avenue, US 60 if you're a trucker, and uh, and then you go up this hill and you go to the light. And then you, I would take a right, and then the first left, and then my my place was down that road. Well, one night, I'm driving home from work. I work nights. I was a security officer. I'd get off like at 3 or 4 in the morning. And I was crossing under Grand, and I saw a muzzle flash, and then my window shattered. It didn't immediately break and crumble, but it shattered. And I blacked out. And when I came to, my car was rolling out into the intersection. The light was green, but my car was rolling out into the intersection. It's a five-speed manual transmission, so I uh, first thing I did was check everything, make sure I wasn't bleeding. I was looking for blood, no blood, but my head hurt as as though I mean it hurt. There was pressure, there was pain, as though I had been shot. So I put the car in gear and I went over to make that first left turn to go down my road and right there's a circle K. So I pull in there and I call the police and I tell them what happened and they said they couldn't find any shooter, they couldn't find, there was no casings or anything and if I couldn't give a description there was nothing they could do. They gave, he gave me his card and uh, something else, I can't remember what he gave me, but he gave me a card and something uh, something else. I can't even remember what it was. It was 10 years ago. Anyway, he said, if I remembered anything, if I saw him again, give him a call. I said, sure, whatever. So I went home, and when I got out of the car and closed the door, then the window broke the rest of the way. But I spent two weeks looking through the car, trying to find where a bullet would have hit. Did it go out the other door? Did it lodge itself in some part of the car? Nothing. Because if it didn't hit me, that means it went across or into the back. There was no sign of a bullet hole anywhere in that car except for where it came through the window. And because of the lost time, let me give you a for instance. I didn't go that way home from work for a very long time. Because from where I worked, it, like I said, if you know the layout of Phoenix, Arizona, I would take the, 10, the 101 to the I-10, head east to the 17, and then head north on the 17 to Thomas. Well, because that happened, I stopped going home that way. I would go all the way around to the north on the 101, 
hit the 17 and head south, which was twice the distance, but I refused to go under Grand. And then a few months passed, and finally I said, you know, fuck it, face your fears, whatever. So I went all the way around, when, or not all the way around, I went home the normal way. And when I came under Grand, I was terrified. I've been, now mind you, I've been shot at before, and being shot at and having guns pulled on me does not scare me. Okay, it's happened before. But I was terrified to go under that bridge. And then when I got to the bridge, I expected the light to be immediately on the other side of this bridge. And it wasn't. The light is like a quarter mile or so up the hill from this bridge. So that night I experienced lost time and then had this phantom pain in my head from God for some injury that I didn't sustain. So I didn't sustain any injury, but also there was no hole where the bullet would have or should have hit. I mean, I trailed every trajectory. The bullet came in, the, the window went like, like this. The bullet came in about right here. It's, there's only so many places it could have gone trajectory wise. I checked the back seat, the side, the, you know, the passenger seat, the door, the console. I checked everything that it could, the bullet could have possibly hit. There was no bullet hole at all. And like I said, gunshots don't make me faint. If anything, I've run toward gunshots and have had guns pulled on me. I've watched two men wrestle over a gun with one having the intent, intent to kill the other one. Okay? People screaming and I'm running towards them. I'm a security officer. That's what I do. Not to mention I grew up with some rough people. That's just what we did. Getting shot at doesn't scare me. Having guns pulled on me doesn't scare me. But going under this bridge terrified me. And then factor in the missing time, factor in the phantom pain. And like I said, I'm not sure that I understand what happened, but I don't, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. And uh, so I told this story to someone and they said, maybe God has plans for you. I said, there must be some pretty damn good plans if I was pulled from the jaws of death. But if I wasn't pulled from the jaws of death and it was just a fluke, where was the bullet? I mean, the guy missed. Where's the bullet? Anyway. That was uh, that was probably the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me ever. And I'm talking, I've just told you about all the times I've seen ghosts or had weird experiences. I've even seen UFOs, but that's I don't consider UFOs to be supernatural. But just for argument's sake, we'll give you that one too. So I'm sitting on my car on on the hood, you know, sitting on the hood, resting on the windshield. My life's going kind of sideways <laughs> so and I'm not religious but I do believe there is a God or something out there to that effect I don't think that this being has a job title he just exists it just exists because I'm not gonna say whether it's a male or female but I said God, just give me a sign. And looking up at where, from where I was, I was parked on the opposite side of the building from where my apartment was. And you could see over the, to the top of the building, you could see that the top of the building, you could see over it, but you could see the top of the building, and there was a bank of clouds there. And then over here, there was another bank of clouds. I mean, the banks of clouds were not, like, right together. 
There was a bank of clouds just over the building and a bank of clouds back over here. And as soon as I said, God, just give me a sign, three translucent, what color, pastel colored orbs. And they kept, the colors weren't just like fixed. They were like undulating, I guess you could say, or, or whatever, what would you say, just changing, kind of like disco lights. No, not like disco lights, because it wasn't fast. It was like like kaleidoscopic almost, just just pastel colors, translucent pastel colors, green, yellow, blue, and it just three of them, and they flew out of one bank of clouds and into another one. And before you start rattling off different types of aircraft, I grew up in the United States Air Force. My favorite, all-time favorite technology is airplanes. At that time, I knew every form of conventional aircraft that had ever flown, from dirigibles to weather balloons, and every plane in between, from Kitty Hawk all the way to the SR-71, Blackbird, every scramjet tester, every fucking test plane, you name it, even their little fucking fan-driven UFO discs that they used to fly. If they've flown it, and it's a conventional, i.e. internal combustion engine craft, I knew about it. That wasn't it. Do I know what they were? No. Do I think they were any type of conventional aircraft that humans use? No. Do I think they were intelligently controlled craft? Yes. Do I know what they were? No. That means to me, I don't know if anybody else can identify them, but myself, I cannot identify them. So that makes them unidentified flying objects. That doesn't mean that they weren't controlled by humans. That means that I cannot identify them in the vast catalog of aircraft that I have in the noggin. <laughs> so that is my list of supernatural occurrences even one UFO sighting thrown in there that's the only one that I know for sure was a UFO sighting other than the odd lights don't move that way if it's a plane lights don't move that way if it's a satellite kind of thing but I mean this was not way up in the heavens and this was during the day people during the day <laughs> anyway we're getting under the 30 minute mark uh, I hope you've liked this video I like doing it perfect for Memorial Day something offbeat and lighthearted anyway if you have enjoyed this episode please click the like button you can favorite it if you want uh, leave comments down below because, yeah, I'm probably going to get a rash of stuff about this one. <laughs> I'm probably going to get a bunch of cool stories out of this, too. Leave your cool stories down there. Don't just try and debunk mine. Leave your cool stories. Even if you're a debunker and you've seen something and you think you've explained it, put your story down there. I want to hear it. And I want to hear how you debunked your own story, too. <laughs> Have at thee, in other words. Anyway. If you would like to keep coming back and getting more information, or you just like the sound of my voice, then hit the subscribe button. But until next time, you hang in there. <laughs>